Hi, this is Ed Gregory for photosincolor.com and today I'm gonna to show you how to use the graduated filter in Lightroom. Theme tune! Do 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 do! Graduated filter! Graduated filter! Like this. 100%, 0%. Graduated. So that dance actually described what the graduated filter does. So essentially what is it? Basically what you have to imagine with a graduated filter is with Lightroom, whenever you apply any effect like using the sliders, it does the entire image. But then you have the options like the brush tool where you can select very specific little areas to make those changes. The radial filter allows you to make an effect on an area that is round or oval and then the effect radiates out. Either radiates out or radiates in depending on your settings. The graduated filter essentially goes from one side to the other side, or from the top to the bottom, bottom to top, or any direction across the entire image. So let's jump into Lightroom and let me show you exactly how it works. Remember, follow me on Snapchat. So let's jump straight into Lightroom and have a look. So today we're gonna to be using this image here sent in by Alex Gessie. He sent it in to the um, Photos in Color Facebook page. You can send in your image there. Just head over to the page and send me a message. So it was shot on a, what are we on? A Canon 6D 105 millimeters is where it was. So let me show you the graduated filter. But before I do, let me just do a very quick basic edit. So I'm just gonna, put a little bit of dehaze on there. I'm gonna boost my exposure just a little bit, lift up my shadows and boost up my clarity. Great, so that's the basic image. So let's jump into the graduated filter, which is at the top right hand side, but I can also get into that just by hitting M on the keyboard. Here we go. So let's draw a graduated filter. Like so, I'm just gonna drag down. Now I'm holding shift so that I get a perfectly horizontal line. If I don't hold shift, it can be at any angle at all. I'll double click effect to reset the effect. So now we have nothing there. Now, let me make the exposure 100% so we can see. Now, this is what the filter looks like. You have one line down the middle and then two other lines. Now let's have a look. We've set the exposure to plus four stops. It's really bright. Essentially we've got white 100% of this effect, then down here is 0%. And then between these outer lines, it passes from 100% of the effect to zero. So this is where the fade happens, from 100 to zero, the middle being 50% of whatever the effect is, okay? Not 50% of a slider, 50% of all of these sliders together over here. So let's see how this actually works. So for example, if I line this up at the top with the top line and then drag this to the bottom, now what's happened is the effect is 100% at the top and it's taken the entire image to get to zero of this effect. And then I can actually do the opposite and that's actually put it really close together. Okay, so really close and essentially we've created a perfect line. Okay, which means 100% and zero is very close together. I can actually, you can actually put them completely together if you want like so. I actually used that in another one of my tutorials where I created a letterbox for a cinematic look. Okay, and essentially the way that this is similar is it's very similar to the feathering that you have inside the radial filter. But let's just stick with this right now so we can see what we're doing. So that's essentially what it is. Now, if I hover over the center line, you see these two little arrows appear. That means I can now rotate this and I can spin this all the way around. Now what's important to remember is it always, there's no end to the line. It's not like the radial filter where there's a center point, okay? It spans the entire image infinitely. So no matter what size image goes in, it will always go from one edge to the other edge or if I spin it from the top to the bottom, okay? So that's essentially what it is. But now let's look at some of its uses. Now one of its obvious uses is to use it on the sky or something like this. And what we always have to remember with the radial filter is try not to keep these lines too close together for things where you've got solid amounts of color like in the sky. Let me show you. I'll double click effect and let's say to boost this sky here, what we're going to do is we're gonna boost the exposure, okay? Now, even if we boost it a little tiny bit, 
we're definitely gonna see a line across the image, okay? Whereas if we extend this down a little bit and then bring it over so it even goes into the mountains, you can see the effect is, um, it's a lot smoother and more pleasant to look at. So let's do an edit. I'm actually gonna bring the exposure down, boost the contrast up a hair. I really wanna lift the highlights and the whites up so the clouds really pop and the shadows I'm gonna bring down and then I'm gonna boost the saturation and I'm gonna move this towards the blue, okay? That was a really quick, I know, edit on what I would do, um, like so. So essentially down the side here gives me lots of options. I've got white balance, I've got my basic settings which is exposure, contrast, highlight, shadows, whites and blacks. I then have my clarity and dehaze. The dehaze is only available in the CC version, I believe. Saturation, then I've got sharpness and things down here. Then I can even add color. So let's add some extra blue to the sky or let's add some pink to the sky, for example. Okay, remember this isn't how I would necessarily edit it. It's just for demonstration purposes. So for example, let's use this and let's go. So I want to graduate this. So I want to make it really smooth on the sky, but I have affected these mountains and I don't want to for example. Well, this is where it gets very powerful, is I have the brush tool. Okay, so I can come into brush tool, and now I can select erase. And essentially, what I can do is I can shrink this down, and I can just erase it on the mountains. So it's actually going to take the effect away. And actually, if I just draw a line through the sky, you can see where I've taken that effect away. So what else I can do, because of the way that this image is, okay, I can actually use the auto mask and Lightroom's going to do a really great job of allowing me to literally paint along the line of the mountains and it's essentially going to erase it from the mountains but nowhere else. Now I can see this by hitting O. So by hitting O, Lightroom actually gives me a mask, okay? And it does this in all the different filters. So it's not turning anything red, it's just showing me where it is and is not being affected. So let's press O again. And we can actually see by taking the contrast down that it's kind of taking it away from the edge of the clouds. So let's bring this back. So now this is already starting to look great. So let's look at some other things you can do. Right click on it and what I can do here is duplicate. Okay, by doing this it's going to take that filter and it's just going to create the exact same one again. Now you might be wondering why would you do that? Well you might for example want to affect the exact same thing Let's come away from brush and go back into edit. And then I'll rotate it because I want to have the same effect maybe on the sea or the lake. I'm not sure if it's a sea or a lake or a river. But say I want to have it down here. But this, I actually have a line so I can actually have my graduated filter to be a little bit stronger. Okay? But you can see that that effect for this image kind of didn't work because it looks pretty bad. So let's just bring all these things back. I'm going to bring my contrast down, bring my brightness up. I'm definitely going to get rid of the color from in there and I'm going to add some more yellow to it. Let's say that that's fine. Um, okay, that looks great. I think, I don't think it's perfect. In fact, I'm going to bring the sharpness and my clarity down so it's going to smooth that water out like so. Great, but I am going to boost the graduation on that. I think that looks awesome. Now what we're going to do, because I want to really show you how you can use the graduated filter in many ways, is let's add a new one. And what we're going to do here is I just want to affect the middle section. Now, yes, I could use the brush, but I could also use the graduated filter. And let me show you how. So, for example, on these clouds, I want there to be a bit of yellow, okay, at coming onto the top of it as if the sun is kind of bouncing off those clouds, off these mountains. So we have a little bit of yellow set in at the top here and I'm also going to boost my clarity, I'm going to lift my highlights and I'm going to pull back my shadows actually for this one. Okay, pretty happy with the way that looks but it's also ruined my sky. So again, I can come into the brush module, I can hit erase for this one, auto mask is on and now, essentially, if I just run along the mountains, like so, it's actually going to erase it from the sky. So let's just go along here. And I've created a line. So I'll hit O, and you can see it's just affected the top of my mountains. Now I'll take off the auto mask, and now I can erase it from the rest of the sky, just like so. Because this is the thing with the auto mask, is I wouldn't, if I just painted over the sky with the auto mask turned on, it would then do the entire 
it would kind of look at the clouds and, and mask some of the clouds. So let's just come in here. It's Mr. Section here. It does this sometimes. It gets confused, but that's fine. It is Lightroom after all, not Photoshop. And so that looks pretty good to me. Hit O. And now, because I have these multiple layers, I can now affect them however I want. So I can say, oh, I want to add purple just to the top of the clouds. For example, I probably wouldn't want to do that, or blue to them. So let's just stick it with how we had it before. And now we're going to do the same at the bottom, and I'm going to add some green. Okay, so let's add a little bit down here. Oh, I've turned off the filter, graduated filter. I'm on green, I'm just going to add another one. And again, this one's going to go upwards. And this one, let's add some green up here. Take the rest out. Uh, I want to add a little contrast and lift the exposure actually, I think a little bit, boost my clarity. But again, I don't want it to be at the bottom and I want that to be a lot softer of a fade. So you can see, I don't want the effect to be quite as dramatic, like so. Hit the brush, hit erase. You can see I can just keep on doing this many times. And yes, in a way I could be doing this with the radio brush or the, um, just a regular brush tool, but the graduated filter, what that allows me to do, you can look at the before and the after, is to really add some graduated effects to my image. And it really is powerful. Now, the other thing that I've showed you before in another tutorial is how to use it to create a tilt shift effect by adding, bringing the sharpness all the way down and adding in some filters like so. Let's just reset the temperature and then it'll fade it all out and let's just do the same at the top. So essentially it's just gonna put a little bit of, of a blur into focus in there. So let's just come out of this. Let's look at the before and the after. Again, it's not a completed finished image, but you can see the difference that we've made to different sections, but sweeping the entire thing down the image. Now, the other thing you can do is shape light with it. So for example, let's create uh, one from each side where we're going to bring in, we're going to make it nice and dark. And let's, for example, um, I'm just going to go very dramatic. I'm not going to actually try and make it look particularly good. And I'm going to duplicate this and I'm going to put it on the other side and I'm going to rotate it all the way around like so. So essentially what I've done is I've, is I've shaped the light. So now it's kind of a triangle that's bringing you into the mountains. Again, probably not what I would do with this image, but it does demonstrate how to use the graduated filter. So that's how I would do it. Now, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and definitely subscribe. If you think I missed something in the video, leave me a comment below. And if you have any ideas for videos that I could do in the future, just let me know and I will try and get to them at some point in the future. This was Ed Gregory for photosincolor.com. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Weird. Thank you so much for what? Watching? I guess so. Thanks for watching. Yeah. Makes sense.